Yeah, that is an, an awesome question right there because the the truth of it is is that you do have business owners that are trying to get to that exit point. Not necessarily buy a business, but how do I get to where I can exit this? And I would say the exact same way is step back, take that thousand foot stare down at your business and figure out where can I add value? Where can I add systems? Where can I make this a smoother transaction down the road? Show that the business is profitable. It does turn revenue and uh, get all the assets and everything aligned, be able to put all of that together. Uh, You can put together your own evaluations and stuff. We live in a great age of technology to where you can go online and start putting this stuff together and that would guide you in the direction of what you're going to need to do uh, to get that business to where it needs to be. So it's the same stuff that you would be looking at when you're buying a business. You want to look at your own business and say, how can I make my hiring process better, my employee process better? How can I make my customer service better? And how can I have all of this down so on day zero for a new owner, they know exactly what to do and we can have a smooth transition where I can come in, spend a couple weeks and they know exactly how to operate the business because the business operates itself. By doing that, that's going to add huge value to your business. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I have with me a newfound friend from America, and I'm up here in Canada. Ron is here. Ron has been on another podcast called Dad Space. If you haven't heard Ron over on Dad Space, that episode is coming out very soon. You got to go over there and check it out. Ron shares his dad story with us. Today, we're talking about his book. Ron's here today. Ron, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic today, and once again, I'm glad to be here and be part of what you have going on. See? So, like, two times now. This is great. Like like I said, if we do three interviews in a row, Ron, you get a prize, just so you know. (laughs) I don't know what that prize is, but you will get a prize. So, that's something to consider, you know, as you contemplate maybe doing one more episode with me. Well, I mean, I might just have to expand my skill set into something else or figure out a way to get back on uh, dad space. There you go. Something. We'll have to do something, right? We'll figure it out. It's amazing. So you're here to talk today about a book that you wrote. When did you write this book first? Uh, about a year ago. Okay. Almost. A, yeah. Yeah. Coming up on a year. Just. Yeah. About a year ago. So it's buying for exit, how to buy, I have it on the screen, how to buy and sell a business like a pro on your first deal. Now, okay, I hear a lot of buying of other things, but I've never really thought about buying and selling a business. What was the, what was the idea behind creating a book like this, Ron? So I had purchased a uh, already existing cleaning company and about a year later sold it. Uh, and there was a lot of things that I brought to the table from a, a business perspective that I was able to increase the value in it. Uh, and that led me to write the book because I felt that this is all stuff that I would one day write a book about. And I figured, why not just do it now? I was in the headspace myself of saying, I have all these great ideas to write books and I don't execute on them. And I just wait. Why not do this? Why the time? Why it's all fresh in my mind? Uh, I was raised around just flipping cars and doing that kind of stuff. And I looked at buying and selling a business as the same same concept. There's certain things you're going to look for in order to be successful at it. Mm -hmm. And I put it all down on paper and it became a book. So I think the one thing I would struggle with, Ron, to be quite honest with you, if I bought a business or I bought a car or bought a house, I would probably fall in love with it and not want to get rid of it. And I would start collecting them like 
little tchotchkes and things and have all of these businesses and things. And I would be broke because, I don't know, I would fall in love with what the business does. I'd fall in love with the employees, the customers, the location, whatever that is. And I'd have a hard time selling it. Was it hard to sell that business once you had it? Yeah, that, that can be. Uh, emotional attachments, you know, it's something that happens. I, I tend not to get too overly emotionally attached to things because uh, they come and go and you don't know what that next transition is going to look like. Uh, business buying in the last couple of years has really come of age. I look at it, I think it's going to be the next house flipping industry, how we mm. saw an explosion in people flipping houses by buying, rehabbing, and selling. I kind of see the same momentum starting in the business buying, the acquisition order. And there's a lot of a lot of companies that are now acquiring businesses to add on to existing businesses because it makes sense. So they might not necessarily be buying for exit, but they're looking for acquisitions that can be added on to what they have. So when we talk about buying for exit, it's having that endpoint in mind. That's that's the main preference of the book is when you're doing something to have that end in mind. So when you talk about falling in love with everything, yeah. you want to have that in mind that I'm not going to fall in love with this because I'm going to do specific things that are going to lead me to an outcome, which would be exiting the business, uh, whether that's 12 months, 24 months, five years or whatever that timeline looks like. Uh, you want to make sure that everything you're doing is leading you in a path to where you can have a profitable exit from that business. So for that business, the cleaning business you're talking about, did you have a rehab component to the business that you had to go through? No. So the, we had a great foundation that we started with, uh, but there was no systems, no nothing in place. Uh, we had clients. And that's that's one of the main things you want to look for is you want to have something that's creating revenue that has clients. So we had all of that, but we had no systems. We had no strategies. There, it, there was no it was just chaos. really. Mm -hmm. So it was figuring out how to get rid of that chaos, which is just systematics with any business. So going in there, making sure you can add value to it is an important thing, uh, which I brought in. I'm a a systems guy and came from an operations background. So coming in and adding in systems and implementing that kind of stuff was secondhand for me. I, I love that. So that fit my strength. So when you when you're doing something like this, you want to make sure you're doing something that fits your strengths. Now, if you hate creating systems and all of that. <laughs> That's the, that wouldn't have been the business for you. You yeah. you might need to look into something that is lacking uh, marketing if you're really good at marketing, but something that has the systems but don't have the leads coming in or creating that revenue from that perspective is where can you add value into that business? Uh, there, there's a few different perspectives I look at is high value quick, so HVQs. Uh, high value long, so HVLs, and then would be nice. Uh, those that stuff when you're looking at a business is how can you add value fast, quickly? How can you add long term value? And then what are the things that say you are rocking and rolling? We can get here. This is what I want to accomplish. The would be nice stuff as well. So those are all lists you're wanting to make as you're looking at possible acquisitions. Wow. Okay. So had you not stepped in for your your example. In particular, had you not stepped in for that company or someone else, what might have happened to that company long term? Were they on a um, a downturn or what, what might have happened? I guess is we're kind of guessing, but what do you think? The how was the business trending? I, I think well, the the business was trending up, trending upward just because there's more people wanting that kind of service now. The owner was starting to get burnt out. Was it? It wasn't. The passion was gone and uh, ready to move on. So I don't know what the long term. If it would have completely sustained, there was a lot of easy stuff to be able to bring in that added value and created more revenue. Uh, just because 
the owner, the previous owner was kind of on the way out and was looking to do other things and didn't want to be consumed by the business. So finding somebody that started something up and then have kind of lost that passion for it, but they still have a business with employees. Uh, there's one of two things that are going to happen. They're either going to sell it or they're just going to close it down. And uh, in this case, we were able to step in. We were in by the business. Wow. Okay. So uh, any, I'm thinking too, like if I was a, if I was an employee of a business that had, and this new person shows up, I'd be like, Oh, who's this now? What's happening? What's going to happen to me? Like I, I need this job. I need this business. And, and I could, I could almost see it, I guess, a little bit as a threat, maybe that, you know, like what's happening to my boss? Why, why are we going through this? And you're, you're kind of coming in to help the company, right? You're coming in there to give yeah. some stability. Yeah. You want to make sure you come in from a place of, especially with employees, uh, you know, there's things I would do different and all of that. It's all, it's all fluid. Everything's always changing. And you always look back and say, well, I wish I would have done this or that. And that that's how I ended up writing the book. Cause these were all my notes on like, oh, I should have done this. So I should have done this, but ha having a clear message and alignment with that former owner uh, is important. Because you are there to make things better. In a lot of instances, the systems and processes that you're going to put into place are going to make it easier for the employees. They might not see that from day one, uh, but put out actionable items that you can take action on. Don't come in with a pipe dream. Uh, people don't want to be sold a big shabam they want to see yeah. some stuff that you say hey we're going to do this and then you execute on it so then they can build some confidence in you and what you're doing okay so let's get into the book a little bit too so buying for exit ron tell me who the, who this is for who the book is written for like who you had in mind when you wrote this and how this book will help them so i i kind of, i had myself in mind when i wrote it so i was the first time buying a business. I, I've been in business and leadership and management and from the Marine Corps to the construction industry for the last 15 plus years. And I had all these notes because I'm a real note taker on how the process went, what I would do different. And I was like, this is information I wish I had because I, I, I'm a lifelong learner. I listen on Audible to probably about 10 books about wow. buying businesses, how to secure all of this stuff leading up. And this is the stuff that I felt was left out. Like it might seem like small details, but these are these are important things. This is stuff that you want to focus on. So my it's focused towards that first time business buyer that's looking to be able to add value. Whether you're buying a business to exit or you're moving into a business, say, you're going to fall in love with it. Uh, I, th I think a lot of these principles still come into that play just because you want to be able to step in, add value. You need to know how to structure the deal and what all of that looks like. Uh, I'm kind of a fly by the seat of my pants. I think if you're pushing forward, it's better than just standing still. And this right here, you get a glimpse into what I felt and what I, my takeaway was from educating myself before going in and then getting the deal done and then all the way through exit of us selling the business as well. So is there a type of business that this is written for or can this be applied to many different scenarios? I think it can be applied to any business that you're looking at as making a purchase. Uh, in my case, like I said, it was a cleaning company, but I have been involved in acquisitions of other companies as well, not from an ownership perspective, but just being involved. Uh, I think it's all the same details come into play, the due diligence, uh, having the mindset of what you want to look for. It's all across the board, the same kind of stuff. So I'm a huge lover of all those house flipping shows, all that HDTV and all that. I love watching those things when they walk in, place is falling apart. It's there's holes in the wall. The roof is missing. 
there's something swimming in the pool in the backyard and they turn it around and, and flip into this beautiful home. What are the similarities between a house flipping um, il illustration example to a business flipping? Is there anything that's similar, anything different? Yeah, so you're, go you're going to want not a complete disaster. Okay. Uh, yeah. You want something that's <laughs> stable. Okay. And you want something that you can add value to. And that, you know, and at the end of the day, if you have some passion for it as well, that's going to help a lot to have that drive. A lot of home flippers, you know, are general contractors that enjoy that anyhow, and it just fits into their business model. Uh, but being able to go in and start changing stuff around, add marketing, logos, streamline stuff, uh, be able to add systems in place that make life better for employees. The, that's all stuff that's a total turnaround from day one to whenever you exit the business. You can look back and say, wow, like is, here we were on day one. We had absolutely nothing. Now anybody could sit down and take this over. I, I think creating a turnkey environment, whether the owner wants to hire a manager or run the business themselves, is very critical. So having the day-to-day the -day operations, what does that look like in all the systems in place? Uh, it's the same as going into a house that it's got a lot of issues and then making it a turnkey somebody can move in. You're doing the same thing with the business. You're taking uh, a business that an owner might be working 100 hours a week and can't seem to get any traction, going in there, using your strengths to be able to create that traction, change that business around to where it is a functioning machine, and then also give the book, the guidebook on this is what's happening. Here's the systems and how this business is run and turn those keys over to somebody else so then they can go live that dream. Okay, so you, I, you mentioned systems many times. Can you explain to me maybe one or two of the systems that are key that really need to be in place and working well for a, a business to continue and to be and to thrive. Yeah. So you you have to have onboarding and hiring and employee systems. That if, if you have a business that has employees, the number one thing you need to do is make sure there's a system for them. And what does that look like from hiring to recruiting to retaining employees, uh, employee handbooks, all of that kind of stuff, because you the employees have to be there. So you need to make sure you have systems for that. Uh, you also, you got to have systems on how the business is run. Or what does the day-to-day -day look like uh, from when people show up to uh, what they go do and how they do it, having order to that is very, very important, uh, especially to the bottom line, as well as uh, products and all of that kind of stuff, having a system in place and streamlining that stuff down to where there's not a whole lot of fluff. Uh, that That is very important because I think a lot of small businesses run off of uh, a lot of stuff just being put in there without much thought to it because yeah. when you're in the trenches and you don't have time to think about it, it, it just pyres on and coming in with a, a thousand foot overview, looking at a business from that perspective yeah. can just add new light to it. And what does that look like on a daily basis? And a lot of times you're going to be dealing with owners that probably started out by themselves. And then just out of organic growth, was able to grow it into, say, a staff of 5, 10, 15, 20 people. And they've never had the opportunity to just take a breath and figure out exactly what's a better way to run this because they're really good at what they do. And the word of mouth spread. And then next thing, they have this machine that is flying down the road at 100 miles an hour. And the problem is, is that there's exits and turns and you can't be going 100 miles an hour forever. Yeah. And you're reading the owner's manual while you're zooming down the highway. <laughs> you're yeah. like, how do I run yeah, this business 
What do yeah, I do? you're trying to figure you. out how to run a business <laughs> at the same time, continue doing what you were doing. So uh, being able to get out of the business and work on the business is very critical. That That's across the board in any business. You hear that uh, being said at any business development leadership thing. And when you're stepping in to buy a business, you have to be going in with the, the thought and mindset that I'm buying this business to work on it, not to work in it. Like this isn't, I'm not yeah. buying this because yeah. I want to work in this. Yeah. I'm buying this because I see where I can add value and make this a better business for the employees and the customers at the end of the day. So let's do, okay, we've talked uh, really good about the whole buying process, coming in, helping the staff, helping the business, kind of right size it, make sure it's doing well. But there's the exit piece as well, Ron. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, selling is, if you go into it with the mindset of, I'm planning on exiting this business, there will be a sale. That starts to make it easier because you're focused on the things that are going to impact that, uh, which is going to be those high value items that you can add that value quickly. And then also starting to implement the long term ones as well. And putting up a business for sale is a lot easier than most people would think. There's a lot of businesses for sale. One of the one of the main things with selling a business is most people don't know is that these transactions happen all the time and most stuff doesn't even make it to market. Uh, it's typically an acquisition between competition and they people know each other and that's how it ends up happening is another company just takes that on or it's an acquaintance of people meet each other and they really want to be involved in that and work their way into the ownership. So a lot of businesses don't even make its way to the listing stage where stuff will go up for sale. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of resources out there to be able to lead you to selling the business. Uh, as just going online, doing a Google search, there's a lot of sites out there where people list businesses. I think Craigslist is still up and going. And that's a great place when you're looking for an acquisition because you're going to have people that list their businesses on there as well as Facebook Marketplace. Once you have something up and going, uh, it's as easy as you know making some phone calls, uh, maybe some competition. Uh, there's always people when you own a business and it's successful, you will be getting phone calls and emails from people wanting to either list the business or uh, possibly acquire it. So I, I think the exit part becomes a lot more easier. The main thing that you want to do is you want to have everything in order. You want to be able to prove revenue, prove, uh, prove the profits, show exactly what the business is doing, and be able to show a well-oiled machine. Because that is where you're going to be able to make that money on the exit is by having all. Because if you can't show any of that or prove that or somebody shows up and it, it's not what you're advertising isn't happening or they can't feel that, you're not going to be able to exit a business. We've come through the global pandemic, Ron. We've had small businesses struggling. Um, we've had business owners struggling through all of those closures and stuff here in Canada um, and the U.S. as well. There's There's just been this really tough sad time for a lot of business trying to survive through all of the the craziness we've been through right um if there's a business owner out there and they're contemplating selling their business what would you give them as some advice as they kind of go down that that road and, and consider selling what they what they have yeah that is an, an awesome question right there because the the truth of it is is that you do have business owners that are trying to get to that exit point not necessarily buy a business but how do i get to where i can exit this and i would say the exact same way is step back take that thousand foot stare down at your business and figure out where can i add value where can i add systems where can I make this a smoother trans a transaction down the road? Show that the business is profitable. It does turn revenue. And uh, 
get all the assets and everything aligned, be able to put all of that together. Uh, you can put together your own evaluations and stuff. We live in a great age of technology to where you can go online and start putting this stuff together. And that would guide you in the direction of what you're going to need to do uh, to get that business to where it needs to be. So it's the same stuff that you would be looking at when you're buying a business, you want to look at your own business and say, how can I make my hiring process better, my employee process better? How can I make my customer service better? And how can I have all of this down? So on day zero for a new owner, they know exactly what to do. And we can have a smooth transit transition where I can come in, spend a couple of weeks and they know exactly how to operate the business because the business operates itself. Mm -hmm. By doing that, that's going to add huge value to your business. Uh, and that's what I would recommend. I would recommend if you're a business owner wondering how do I get out of where I'm currently at, go pick up the book and read through it, listen to it on Audible. And that is going to help you understand exactly what I can do with my current business to get to the point where I can sell it. There's a lot of small business owners, uh, myself included, that have an idea. We create a business and then we go from creating a a business to creating a job and now we're stuck there and we're doing our job we're doing the thing we don't have money to hire a lot of employees all that stuff so we end up sitting behind the counter we end up answering the phones we end up creating the the product whatever that is we end up just creating a new job for ourselves instead of a business so any any advice for a business owner on how to separate yourself from being an employee to being an owner? So you have to get to profitability. You, you have to be able to be creating revenue so you can bring people on and then they add value uh, to that company. That So with small, small businesses, single owners and one or two, th one or two people, that starts to get hard because that that's that very beginning uh, of the transition of from ID and something that you're working on to an actual business that's generating money and you're sustaining other people's lives through that. So I would recommend it looking at it not from a necessary passion perspective when you are in that phases of what can I do to get to the next point that allows me to bring somebody on so I no longer have to do this. Because any business that you start, you're going to have to do that stuff. You're going to have to be in the weeds. But the quicker you can get out of the weeds and get yourself into the bigger picture thinking, that's when that business is going to be able to start creating more revenue. Because the magic doesn't happen in you doing the writing or out running the sales cars or actually doing the work. The magic happens when you can start moving people into those positions and you can use your mind and your vision for what that business was supposed to be. So then you can go out and have that impact because uh, the greater impact you have, the better it is for business. I, I'm a firm believer that businesses are there to go out and make money. And the way they can make money is by adding great value to people's lives. So you want to make sure that you're going out and adding that value. And as long as you're doing that, people will continue to pay for your service. Uh, they'll pay a premium for your service, which will allow you to bring on more people to continue that mission. Amazing. So buying for exit, how to buy and sell a business like a pro on your first deal. Ron, normally we introduce our guests at the beginning and have them share a little bit about themselves. We've kind of done this in reverse order. We're doing it at the end. So people are like, we just went right into the content. I think a lot of people are going to like that. Ron, before we go, let people know how they can get in touch with you. I can see the books on Audible you mentioned, it's on Amazon. How do we connect with you and how do we get a copy of the book in our life? And if we have questions, what, how do we reach you? 
So you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free, Ron Newsbaum on there. I'm the CEO and co-founder of NutNest right now. So Ron at NutNest.com is my email address. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, uh, as well as you can, like you just said, get the book on Amazon as well as Audible. Uh, I a great auto, audio recording. It's not a super long book. So I tried to add as much value as I could quickly because it's all about finding those one or two points when you're reading a book. So I didn't want to put something out there that just had a bunch of fluff. I tried to get directly to the points and uh, exactly what needs to happen. So feel free to uh, find me on LinkedIn. RonWesley.com is my website. You can find the book on there as well as also with information on how to get a hold of me. And as you mentioned, as we were talking to Ron, thank you for your service, your country. Thank you for putting yourself out there to help and be a part of the solution. Um, all of the things and the places you've served. Again, just thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, not everyone does that and it's noticeable when people do. So thank you for serving in that way and to your family. And I just hope you have a great week this week. Thank you so much for part two with you, Ron. Um, and if you're listening to this, you're like, I need more Ron in my life. A, go get the book or listen to the book, but B, go over and check out Dad Space and hear a little bit more about Ron's story and his family. This guy's listen. If you're listening to this, Ron is a complete gentleman. You need this guy in your life. So reach out and, and speak to Ron. Let him know you heard him on the podcast. Support his book. Support this great author. And if you have a business question and you're a, you're a, you're a business owner and you're contemplating selling or you want to buy a business, Right here's your resource. Ron, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Hey, awesome to be here and thank you for having me again. Hey, you know what? You have a you have a well welcome out at the front door anytime you want, Ron. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. Jump over to livingthenextchapter.com our website, and you will see a spot where you can leave a voice message. We'd love to hear your feedback. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to hear from you. So if you want your voice on this podcast, yes, that's possible. Go to livingthenextchapter.com. Click the little icon, little microphone icon. Leave a voice message. We'll insert your message into the podcast. Tell us where you're listening from. Uh, Tell us your favorite guest. Maybe there's a guest we should have on the podcast. Maybe you should be our next guest. Leave us a message, livingthenextchapter.com. Again, thank you so much for listening. Please share this podcast episode with one person. That's all we're asking. Meet you over there at livingthenextchapter.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Love to hear from you. Till the next episode. It's coming up right away. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for being part of Living the Next Chapter. Thank you for supporting our guests. Have a great day. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? Listen to this podcast. This podcast is for teens in the U.S. and Canada. To learn more, go to FatimaBay.com slash podcast, or just look for MindShift Power Podcast on any listening platform. I look forward to you being a faithful listener. 